In the early months of 2023, North Korea held grand-scale meetings, groundbreaking ceremonies, and released propaganda to the world with a strong, overriding message. North Korea's people will never starve again. But North Korea watchers say the country is in the midst of a food crisis that's set to worsen. The situation in North Korea right now is very dire. Um, I mean, we've been hearing about shortages of food since for two, over two years now. A 2019 United Nations food security assessment said the North recorded its worst harvest in a decade. Over 40% of the reclusive state's population was estimated to be food insecure and in need of urgent food assistance. The nation's food shortages appear to have worsened because of three years of isolation during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Russia-Ukraine war that has bogged down global supply chains and as much of the world enters an economic downturn. But some experts say the situation may not be as dire as believed. Frankly, I don't expect any significant famine to happen in North Korea right now. So how bad is North Korea's food crisis really? The question is frustratingly difficult to answer from outside North Korea. It's extremely difficult to know uh, what the real situation in North Korea because we have very limited access right now. You know, there's no presence from the UN agencies. There's a uh, you know, very limited number of diplomats on the ground. Pyongyang tightly controls what information about the country reaches the rest of the world. That means human rights experts like Yoon must do their best to understand what's going on by speaking to defectors and trying to compare current conditions with what has happened in the past. The most obvious comparison is a famine in the 1990s known as the Arduous March. The famine in the 1990s starts because of mismanagement by the government, uh, collapse of the main donor, the Soviet Union, and which follows with a dismantlement, like a temporary dismantlement of the systems within North Korea, like the public distribution collapses, the security enforcement collapses. The famine is remembered as one of the worst humanitarian crises of the 20th century. Pyongyang officially said widespread hunger was triggered by a period of major flooding in 1995. While flooding may well have played a major role, geopolitics was also a factor. I would not emphasize natural disasters. North Koreans like to talk about it, but the same disasters hit South Korea and had very little impact. North Korea had likely already been experiencing a food shortage for much of the 1990s due to the breakup of the former Soviet Union, a major source of foreign aid. So they don't get fertilizer, they probably don't get enough food, and they uh, are not capable of producing enough to keep their population well fed. Rather than accept international aid as a means of addressing the famine, Pyongyang blocked help from reaching some of the most vulnerable parts of the country. The crisis triggered a large outflow of North Koreans desperate to escape poverty, hunger, and devastation. Although the death toll is not certain, Human Rights Watch estimated that as many as 3 million North Koreans died from starvation or related illnesses during the 1990s famine. Over the last 30 years, people in the North have continued to struggle to keep food on the table. And I saw many children that already are losing the battle against malnutrition. And their bodies and minds are stunted. And so we really feel the need there uh, for the special fortified food for the children is very strong. And that uh, we want to make sure we're reaching those most vulnerable children. But what's different today?
survival of the farmers is simply not very high on their agent. Bombs are more important, missiles are more important than farmers, so farmers die. Pyongyang has been ramping up its nuclear weapons program in recent years. In 2019, North Korea spent around 4 billion U.S. dollars on defense, which is about one-fourth of the nation's estimated GDP. In 2022, Pyongyang launched an unprecedented 95 ballistic and other missiles, the highest number of tests recorded in the nation's history. In the first three months of 2023 alone, North Korea tested over 20 missiles, with no sign it was ready to slow down its nuclear program. Accompanied by his 10-year-old daughter, Kim Joo A, the North Korean leader oversaw recent test launches which Pyongyang says are part of its mission to deter war with the West. The DPRK is testing the Council's resolve and purpose, and the Council must act. The U.S. and U.N. have countered with harsh economic sanctions, which Yoon says have come with unintended consequences. I mean, the general sanctions that the UN Security Council implemented for security reasons have targeted 90% uh, of the Pyongyang's income. It is not intended to hurt the people, but the truth is the economy as a whole suffers, and when an economy as a whole suffers, the people that suffer first and the most are those that are at the lowest levels of the pyramid. The human rights situation and the nuclear situation and the food situation are really two sides of the same coin. The North Korea's development of nuclear weapons is built on this extreme repression of the people, which has led to this you know, food crisis that the population are, is suffering. So how does North Korea generate revenue? In the 1980s, North Korea relied on trade and aid from the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc. Today, that partner is China, which Lankov says is big enough to stop a famine. Frankly, I don't expect any significant famine to happen in North Korea right now. The major reason is the new position of China. But what does China want from North Korea? First, it needs a stable North Korea. Beijing does not want instability and chaos in a neighboring country, particularly one with large stockpiles of nuclear weapons. Second, China prefers a divided Korean peninsula. Unification efforts are being led by the more affluent South, which is backed by American money and weapons. Given the current state of affairs, giving more power to the U.S. and the region is the last thing that Beijing wants. The question is how much North Koreans are willing to get from China and how much China is willing to give. Uh, personally, I expect China to be quite generous because China needs a stable North Korea. North Korea is a buffer zone and China can afford to support North Korea for many, many years to come. But the key issue remains. Kim Jong-un appears unwilling to back down on his nuclear buildup efforts. Precious resources will therefore continue to be misappropriated in that direction. There may not be an all-out famine anytime soon, but most North Koreans will continue to suffer from food shortages and even starvation. The country is hanging by a thread, propped up by Beijing. North Korean people are hungry, North Korean people have no freedoms, and they have no an increased level of freedoms in the past, and which makes this repression even more brutal. Um, I feel that in international community needs to pay attention to what's happening in North Korea, and especially when we are talking about nuclear development, missile tests, and North Korea's like kind of you know violence against the world and its population. It's very important to keep in mind the human rights situation.